All right, roasting coffee 101. Um, I get all my coffee from Sweet Maria's out of California, and they send what's called green beans. Uh, coffee actually comes out of a cherry. It's a, a seed-like thing from the middle of a coffee cherry. And um, it starts off green like a seed, like you'd expect. And as you roast it, it gets that brown color, sometimes black, even though I don't roast my coffee anywhere near that far. So what does coffee have to do with in-worlds? Well, it has to do a lot with in-worlds, actually, because uh, it helps power the in-worlds dev and keeps us up at night when we should be sleeping to get the work done. Um, so I really enjoyed coffee. I learned a long time ago that roasting your own pretty much beats everything out there just because of how fresh it is. Plus, you can sort of choose regions that you like and things like that. Uh, this coffee is from Guatemala, and it's going to have a very bright finish to it. It's going to be um, sort of a citrusy, lemony finish and a very good breakfast coffee. And I mostly drink coffee in the morning. So the first step to get this done is for us to throw it in a scale and weigh it. Normally I roast two pounds at a time. I'm going to be doing three because somebody has requested some coffee. So um, I won't bore you with the pouring the coffee in the scale. Plus I can't do it while I'm holding the camera. So uh, I'll pour that in. Let's see what the pile looks like. All right, as you can hopefully see, we now have three pounds of coffee on the scale and um, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this into um, a stainless steel uh, sort of modified rotisserie so um, when I first started I kind of knew I was going to be doing this on a pretty big scale for friends and family and stuff so uh, I bought something offline called an RK drum and it's a stainless steel drum um, that is specifically made for roasting coffee and you also need a pretty fast rotisserie um, and this goes into a standard grill setup and um, I'll show you the inside of that in just a minute. Okay so we have our coffee and some coffee making equipment up here. Um, coffee grinder is one thing that you're going to want if you do decide to roast your own coffee. Um, this is just a bun drip machine and a small espresso machine. Uh, I really like espresso based drinks especially in the summer because you can mix them with ice and stuff and um, they don't get too watery, so that thing comes in handy a lot. And this is the RK drum, and I'll try to get some light in there. And what you can see, hopefully on the video, is that there are fins in there. And those fins, what they do is agitate the coffee um, while uh, it's roasting. And that's important because it keeps the coffee in the air more than it's touching the metal on the drum, which would overcook the coffee and make it uh, unevenly roasted. So it's super important. This particular drum, as I said before, is called an RK drum. It's designed um, by a man named Ron Kyle. Now, he died, but his son, I believe, still designs these drums. So I think if you go to RK drums, uh, I think it's rkdrums.com, you can still find these things if you're interested. Uh, it's very well made. It's all welded stainless steel. And stainless is important, stainless or aluminum as well, because you don't want to accidentally use galvanized steel for food products because you will poison people. I believe it's zinc. Um, so. If you're going to do something like this, make sure you have something that's stainless or uh, aluminum. I prefer stainless because I, I don't really trust eating off of aluminum to begin with. So, Okay, so now basically the name of the game is just get all this coffee into this tube without dropping it all over the place. See, now you can hear I just dropped a little bit. Um, this is probably the hardest part of the whole process, quite honestly. Once you get to really know what you're doing, Coffee roasting is really simple. It provides sort of a little bit of a break when you need it. And, you know, people end up really loving it. And it's something I think anybody can do from home, um, provided a little bit of equipment. Now, the setup that I have is kind of overly complex. You don't really need to be able to roast uh, more than, you know, your share of coffee unless you really want to share it with people. Um, so there are a lot of roasters available out there uh, that are electric and do maybe half pounds or quarter pounds. It's just enough for you to have coffee for a few days before you have to do it some more. And a lot of those can be um, operated inside your house too, or even just under an oven vent. Now, you can also roast coffee in the oven, oven it should be noted, but um, the results from what I've seen online aren't very good. I never tried it, um, but it seems like since there's no agitation of the coffee beans at all um, that you don't quite get the results you might want. Okay, so this thing's all set and 
we locked it. And now what I'm gonna do is preheat the roaster and then I'll take this thing outside. Okay, this is the setup outside. Um, right now the roaster's not loaded in and uh, I should vacuum that chaff up, but eh, we'll be fine with that. I'll vacuum it when we're done. Now chaff is, um, you may see it sometimes when you buy pre-roasted coffee, it's that flaky stuff that comes off the outside, it's like a skin on the coffee seat itself. And um, So this is just a heavy motor for the rotisserie that's going to spin this cylinder that now has three pounds of coffee in it that's weighed out. So the equipment is basically just the roaster, the of gloves here, these are super important by the way, this is the only thing I found that would withstand the heat so I could pull the uh, coffee out of the roaster. Everything else I tried, welding gloves, etc., lasted a few seconds, and that was it. You can see this is a roast log um, from February 2nd, 2000. We did a 280 degree preheat. This is not my handwriting. My handwriting is not that good. Um, and you can see the little guy that was on fire. That didn't actually happen this time, because you'll see at the bottom, no fire again. But we were just proud that, um, that we had started one fire, and then we had learned how to avoid fires. When coffee's roasting, you'll see a bunch of different steps. Um, one of the first things is that you start to smell what? Honestly, it smells like drying hay or grass. And then eventually it starts to smell like cookies. It's kind of interesting, like you're baking something. And then at some point you get to first crack. And you'll see this particular roast, we got the first crack at 10.15. Now I'm going to try to show that to you. Hopefully you can be able to hear it. But First crack actually is where the coffee starts to expand. It's the first of two uh, expansions like this before that happens. Um, and so you get to first crack, and after first crack, the coffee's pretty much ready to go if you really want a light roasted coffee. Um, I usually go somewhere between first and second crack, and um, we were also trying to keep track of a few, a few other things like rolls and snaps and stuff. So um, first crack is... Uh, somewhere in between there is where your city roast, city plus roasts are, and then you go into French roast in Vienna after second crack. And the difference between the two is very audible. Uh, first crack so kind of sounds like um, somebody snapping or uh, a pretty, pretty loud snap. So second crack kind of sounds like Rice Krispies. And then again, you don't want to leave the coffee in too far, too much longer after second crack, because then you get that. So I'm going to load this up into the grill, um, and uh, we'll start roasting. First I got to preheat though, I won't bore you with that. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the beans in and uh, you're gonna see them go in there and then start to roast. So this simply just goes in here and uh, clamps in. Then you get rotisserie for chicken or anything else that you might have and then we just turn on the rotisserie and now we've started a roast. Now based on what we know, I know exactly where to set the grill for this weight and type of coffee. This is just something that you figure out and write down as you go. So every little bit of information is important. You'll notice if we look at the thermocouple, let me try to point that over there. I don't know how good you can see that. The temperature actually dropped and now it's starting to come back up. The beans, of course, will absorb energy as they're uh, roasting. So you see the temperature fluctuate a bit uh, during the roast process. And during certain times, it'll go up and down. Um, some parts of the roasting process are exothermic, giving out energy, and some parts are endothermic, taking in energy. And um, it's actually pretty interesting because Sometimes to get a good roast, you kind of have to play with the gas a little bit to make sure that nothing's getting overheated or anything else. And of course, because I'm trying to show you all this, I forgot the most important part. This little white thing here. And all it is is a little kitchen timer. And uh, that'll tell me if I'm on target for this roast or off target, if it's going to finish on time, etc. So, this is the fun part of coffee roast. This is where... Uh, you hope that you have a friend here or something that you can talk to while this thing just spins and you can smell the aromas and all the different stuff going on with the coffee. Um, you really got to pay a pretty close attention to the sounds and the smells. Uh, I don't do this super scientifically. Yeah, there's a lot of temperatures being read and stuff like that, but um, 
most of it is sound and smell to me. Uh, the, the coffee guys don't do this. They pretty much have an exact science. They know the roast curve and all sorts of crazy stuff. And they do much larger batches than you know one to, to five pounds. So uh, they kind of have to have it down. That noise you hear is the beans clunking around. And um, you know, as we discussed, um, there's those fins inside um, that that stainless steel tube, and they're kicking the beans around, making sure that the beans are staying in the air. Um, for long periods of time so that we don't get an uneven roast. So a little update, we are now four minutes in. Temperature next to the beans is registering at 462 degrees-ish. That probe usually comes up to about 480, 490 before we uh, see first crack, so it's gonna take a little bit. You see how the temperatures fluctuate, stuff is going straight up, it's actually going down right now. Um, the beans are absorbing all that heat right now, and uh, I'm definitely starting to smell the cookie smell a little bit from beyond the uh, drying grass smell, so that's good. Um, definitely smell some sweetness in those beans. Uh, this is going to be a good roast. All right, we have a little bit of a squeak going on, but we're also in the first crack, and let's see if you can hear the beans popping or not. Squeak is just something needs to be oiled, but listen to the, see if you can hear the popping. And that's first crack. Get rid of the squeak for you real quick. Now that coffee is expanding in there. So it's going from the smaller green beans to much, much larger uh, brown ones. And so immediately following this first crack, the coffee is pretty much ready to be ground. It's just very light compared to what most people are used to. All right. I'm going to pull this out in a few minutes and I'll show you the dump onto the cooling rack, which is right there. Alright, I'm starting here second crack, so I'm going to pull this off. Here we go. And we're going to dump it. Now you might notice that it's still cooking. We need to stop that. The way we do that is with this cooling tray here and this fan. I'm gonna pull the heat out of the coffee. Woo! Coming on my feet. And just like that, you'll notice that the snapping is stopped. And our coffee has actually stopped cooking at this point. We're good. Here is your finished cup. Nice Guatemalan. All ready to go into a grinder. Still pretty hot. Roasting Coffee uh, 101. Now this is just a little contraption we put together and uh, my uncle uh, did the welding on the, um, the grate here and there's a, just a fan that we bought that sucks the air down into and through the beans to cool them off real quick. It's one of the most important things about roasting coffee is that you want to make sure the beans get cooled when you want them cooled because otherwise they're going to roast past where you want them to be and that's no good. So anyways, this is Tranquility from Inworlds, and um, this is how we make coffee.